Got it now. <laughs> so here we are. We are live. We finally made it. <laughs> Your whole acronym. I'm like, yes. oh, God, we can't start the show. What's going on? But we're not going to have that. What's going on, partner? Uh, um, um, partner, I'm feeling great. Uh, it's it's definitely been a a long month. September always seems to always just take a long time to roll by. Um, I'm low on sleep, but I'm high on energy. Amen. <laughs> last, night an, last night we had an amazing show on Staten Island. We hit the beat, Hot 97, Def Jam, YMVS was in the building. Mm -hmm. Also, um, so many other oh. rec recognized magazine, uh, Big Breeze. So uh, we also announced our winner, Yaya Storm. He okay. Will be played on Hot 97, and he's won $1,000 a video shoot, and a few write-ups with recognized magazines. So That's dope. Uh, are they going to be coming on um, VPR? Yeah, yeah. He's looking forward to it. You know, he he came to me and he was just like, hey, I've seen your platform. I would love to get on it after winning. And I was like, his music, his energy, he shook the crowd. He took it and nobody could get it back after that, I'm telling you. Great. That is yeah. so dope. Mm -hmm. I see Mr. Perrin himself has pulled up, so I definitely want to get him on the platform. We are very honored to have Mr. Keith Perrin of FUBU, one of the original creators and co-founders. Please come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, hey what's happening? What's happening? What's good? How are you? Man, what's going on? How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm I see fine. you got your FUBU radio going on in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in the studio right now. Yeah, that's what's up. So we're going to definitely fast forward to there. But for those that don't even know the story, we really want to start from the beginning. What is FUBU the brand? How did it begin? And how were you involved? Um, I've been involved since the very beginning. Uh, Damon actually uh, decided to do these tie top hats. And, you know, I'm really not a tie top hat guy, but he decided to do these tie top, tie top hats that were really popular at the time. And uh, we did that for maybe, I want to say maybe about a year or so. And then we started working on developing other other products within the brand. And then that's how we, we didn't even have a name at that point, but we started uh, with the tie top hats and then we started making, uh, we started making the product and we haven't looked back since. You know, I've had so much articles of clothing with FUBU on it. And mm -hmm. I've never, for me, just liking the designs and the color schemes, what does the name stand for so I can, you know, connect to the brand a little bit more? And I know a few people would like to ask that question also. Uh, I mean, it's for us, by us. Uh, at the time when we were developing the brand, we didn't, we actually wanted a name that that uh, was a four-letter name like Puma, Coke, Nike. Um, you know, we was looking for something like that. And... I remember sitting in, uh, sitting around the house, and he was like, "Yo, you need, we need to do something that's you know that's by us and for us." And this is all because of a, a company that put out their article that said that they didn't want the urban youth wearing their brand. Um, so that kind of infuriated us because, you know, with us wearing the brand, you know, we would buy a pair of boots maybe once every two months, or you know, as soon as they get scuffed, you know, you're buying a new pair, and Whereas the, you know, other people, they wear it and they have on that boot for 10 years. So we were actually making you popular and, and contributing to your overall wealth or your company. But yet you don't want us to wear your brand. So at that point, you know, we was kind of frustrated. And and I remember somebody saying, we need to make some stuff that's by us and it's for us. And someone was like, oh, that is by us, for us, that that's four letters are... Bufu. Oh, no, no, no. That sounds crazy. That sounds crazy. <laughs> Can you imagine? This will be a whole other conversation with Bufu. Yeah, let's run that back. <laughs> so, so, you know, I then I, I don't know if it was me or somebody else. I, Damon, I don't remember exactly now, but someone said, how about for us, by us? And we were like, for us, by us. Okay. Fubu. Hmm. Sounds... Sounds kind of different. So we, we just roll with that and it's stuck. Yeah. And and now that I know the, the the name and I can actually like resonate with it. So how did you guys continue to stay relevant in the industry? Like coming up with designs? Cause it seems like you guys just sat there together and like, we're gonna do this. Um, We had a great team of designers who, you know, rotated out throughout the years, but, and 
a great team. You know, we at one point, I remember we had over 100 employees working for us in the office. Um, but what we did was we just provided clothing that was necessary. So if we wanted to wear like a bubble jacket, we was like, yeah, we want to do a bubble jacket. But, you know, everybody then did the bubble jacket. So how are we going to do it? Oh, you know what? Let's make it bricks. You know, the shape of bricks on the on the jacket. That'd be dope. That's connected to the street. Like we always had these far-fetched ideas because it, one thing, it was four of us. So everybody brought something to the table. Everybody elaborated on, you know, um, on whatever design that was there. So I remember me, um, I was like, you know, I need somewhere to hide my weed, you know, because when I, when I, you know, these cops, <laughs> you know, cops be walking up to us and, and patting us down, you know, I need a little, little stash pocket. So we came up with a, a little pocket that inside of the jeans that we put on everything from the shorts to the jeans to the sweat, sweat um, pants. Um, everything had the jean suits, everything had that little pocket inside that you can do your stash. So, it's just little things like that. And then that, and people found that to be so dope. They was like, yo, like they would literally come up to come up to us and be like, yo, you know, you put an inside pocket where I can put my, I'm like, bruh. Right. <laughs> yes, it was intentional. So, um, but I think, you know, with the four of us and, and, and our different, you know, styles and, and, and mentals, you know, it was, it was kind of easy for us to just kind of stay ahead of the curve. I, I think what always really captivated me about FUBU, because it's it's generational, right? Like you guys, especially when hip hop was really peaking for teenagers, right? And and of course, generationally it is now as well, but there were not any clothing brands. Like you said, there were brands that we were wearing and they were like, well, we don't really support that. And we don't want our, war our clothes worn like that. But our trillion dollar spending was going toward these brands. So there really wasn't a brand that you could identify and be like, yo, I can buy this and I'm actually supporting a black brand. So I, I wanna really talk about the integration into the crossover into the music world, which really that collaboration with different artists took you guys to a whole new level. Now, I know that you were from Qu Queens Hollis. Tell us all about how that began and how you started to get your merchandise into the hands of these key hip hop artists. Well, in the beginning, we, you know, we were connected with, um, like, we always was a big fan of Ralph McDaniels. Um, so wherever Ralph would show up, we would try to show up and try to be at the spot. And, um, but we did notice that Hype Williams, Benny Boone, um, and a couple other people, you know, Ray Dijon, uh, Sam, Crazy Sam, like, all these people worked for Ralph or work with Ralph. Um, and then at the time, Ralph was doing videos and then Hype started doing videos. So when Hype started doing videos, he wanted to help us out because he was like, yo, I'm shooting the LL Boys to Men video over here. Y'all need to come through. I'm shooting, you know, this, uh, this, uh, um, who else did we shoot with him? We shot, uh, shot a bunch of people with him, but I think it was brand Nubians or something like that. But, you know, Miss Jones, um, and he would just tell us to pop up and we would pop up and literally stand on that set all day long just to get the, the product in the, in the video. Um, and it was something that we needed as a brand because we wanted to show, you know, back then we had to advertise in the, in the, in, you know, these magazines, which cost 10,000, 12, 15, $20,000 a page. And, you know, we just didn't have that money to advertise. So this was like the best next thing to advertise. This was our social media um, back then. And we were able to just form a lot of relationships. And even down to this day, I've formed so many relationships with a lot of these artists that it's like, it's 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 not as if they go to another brand and they like, oh, you know, hey, how you doing? It's kind of stiff. You know, with us, it's more like family, you know, because we've been there before they blew up before they were platinum, you know, and we messed with them when they was just getting on. So they really appreciate that love. So they, they understand that it's genuine. Um, but I, you know, I do have to give a shout out to Cross Colors and, um, and Carl Kanai because they inspired us too. Um, you know, especially Carl Kanai, uh, Cross Colors, we didn't really see their imaging of the owners back then or who they were. 
we just knew the clothing. Um, it was too loud for me to really wear. Like I would try to buy some solid pieces. I think I might have. Yeah, like, there's a lot one. of big, vibrant color blocking. Yeah, I might have had like one, you know, maybe two color one, but that was it. Um, but Carl Kana, I really supported him. And once it came out, you know, I was wearing all the sweatshirts with the metal on it, and you know, I was I was a big fan of, of Carl Kana. And then when we met him, he he just embraced us and was like, yo, I'm gonna help you guys get, you know, figure this out and navigate through this, this industry. And he did whatever he could and, and, you know, helped us when we was at magic, give his advice. Um, he's always been, you know, solid person throughout the years. So I always give kudos to, the, to those two because, you know, they were very instrumental in, you know, us doing our thing. It just happened like, you know, everything they say, everything is timing. It's almost like, you know, they, they opened the door and then we kicked down the door by the time it was our turn. You know what I mean? So right, because that's what happens, right? Like divine timing, we can't interfere with that. And I and I'm so happy that yeah. you touched on those relationships because a lot of people don't recognize the fact that when you're in business, it's the building of these relationships, it's the networking, right? Sometimes yeah. it's not even the money that you have to put in, but so much time and energy and efforts into really building and maintaining these relationships because you never know who you know, and how much smaller that industry becomes, the, the mm -hmm. more you grow, you're like, oh, you know them, oh, I know them. And you know, it gets smaller and smaller. So it's so important to maintain those relationships. I wanna talk about how FUBU has branched off radio, television, fashion, like it's really taken a turn and become this um, super dynamic conglomerate, if you will. Um, but before you touch on that, I know you asked me about the, the music industry and how do we cross over? I didn't answer that question for you. Um, with that, you know, we were making so much money in, 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 in the fashion industry, people started like Puff, he would come over and see us. I remember one day we pulled up to his party and he pulled up and it was like, it was like Bentley, Bentley, drop top Porsche, I mean, drop top Corvette, um, 500 Benz. And he was looking at us like, you guys are getting money like this and fashion and clothing. Like, I'm doing something wrong, Playboy. I was like, you know, and I remember him coming over to us and talking to us about Fired for Sean John, perhaps. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, the nine starts. Yeah, so now he he um he saw us doing our thing, so he came over and was like, Yo, I'm starting a brand, you know, I'm a real fashionable cat. I think I can I can make it happen. And you know, he, he jumped into the fray. And then before you know it, Jay-Z jumped in with, with Rockaway and it actually cut into our business a little bit because now there were other brands from, you know, more, you know, fashionable, I ain't gonna say more fashionable, but very fashionable guys that, you know, were in the industry already and had a big following. So they were yeah, able I to- see that. Because, because honestly, like, and I know you were probably little then, but this was the brand. This was the hip hop brand. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like you saw FUBU everywhere. Mm -hmm. Even can you tell us about that Gap commercial and how that um, came to be with well, with LL? Well, the Gap commercial. I remember sitting in the um, office. It was in the conference room one day, and I got a call from my boy Ralph uh, Roundtree, and he said to me, "They don't have a hat to fit LL in the Gap. He's shooting this commercial. Do you mind if he wears a, a FUBU hat?" What? No, I don't mind if he wears a FUBU hat. But I, said, I said, hold on one second. I went into the other room to tell the guys. I said, hey, Ralph, Roundtree's on the phone. And he says, uh, Ellen wants to wear a FUBU hat in the Gap commercial. So he was like, what? Hell yeah. So that's how that happened. Unbeknownst to us, he mentioned and he wrapped our name in there. We, did, we didn't know he was going to do that. But when that hit and we were sitting there watching it, you know, for the first time, we were like, what? Did he say for us buyers? Oh my God, yeah. that's a FUBU commercial. We were like, that's a FUBU. I love that Gap commercial. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then it was like, it was just a snowball effect after that because we thought they were going to pull it. They didn't pull it. They kept playing it. And then people started going into the Gap looking for FUBU hats. So it worked out for them because it brought traffic into their stores and they were able to still make some money. And then once they found out, then they took it down. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
They took it down. I mean, they didn't take it down. They fired a couple of people. Right. They had been horn swoggled and they didn't. Yeah. Really and, then, realize. and then it was so um, profitable for them. They they wound up putting another, I think, 20, 30 million dollars behind it and running it again. So they ran it twice. Um, and that was just that took us through the roof. And then for us, you know, coming into that whole you know, 2001, 2002 era when we dropped the album because we figured that, you know, since we started having a lot of this momentum and these guys were jumping into our lane, we were going to jump into their lane. So we wound up putting out an original album with all original music. Um, we went, I think, gold. I think we sold like a little over 500,000. We went gold, but... um, I didn't even know it that. Was a, it, was a, it was a crazy experience because we spent about... Five million dollars, like quick, and people were trying to rob us and to sell us songs that they didn't own, and it, it was just crazy. And they were getting like five thousand for the last beat, but they wanted sixty thousand for our beat, and I was like, "You crazy? Like, we're businessmen. We understand, what, you know, the numbers." So, right, y'all went into it a little bit differently, right? Not these mm -hmm. artists that are going and just signing contracts. You already came from the business world, so. Mm -hmm. You had your shit together. Yeah. And then now, you know, we branched out, you know, obviously Damon is doing Shark Tank and he did, he started that, I think around 2008. And then for us, it was like, okay, this thing is starting to slow down a little bit. What do we do? For me, I started the modeling agency um, around that time as well. And I did that for like two years. I think when Twitter came out, that kind of went haywire because they were like, why should I give you 20% when I can just go on Twitter and hit the person up directly and just book it myself? And hey, if that's what you want to do, do it. Um, and then I just pivoted from there, try to figure out the next thing I wanted to do, which was FUBU Radio. Um, and I felt like I love the music side that we did. It's just, it was just so much politics behind it. I was like, well, if I do music, I mean, if I do radio, Maybe I can still enjoy it and not have all the politics involved, you know. So, you know, I don't have to answer to nobody. I could do whatever I want to do. So it, it's a good thing. You can play what you want to play. You know, play I don't have to play. to nobody. And I, hey, I, yeah. can, I can resonate with that, my brother. So with you having the radio, do you guys have guests come up? What is the what is the experience like when I tune into FUBU Radio? Um, yeah, we have we have a morning show midday. Um, a morning show with Shane McCray and Q. Um, midday show with Chris Childs. My show comes on after hers from two to six, Kizo's Corner, and then I got the night show um, with B Pays that comes on from six to eight. So that's a daily routine. And then on the weekends, I got you know LS One, I got um, K Fox. I got my guy, Brandon McGee, who does the political show. He's a representative out of Connecticut, does a political show. So we, you know, stay in tune with what's going on. Um, I'm about to add a, a few more things. Um, I have my boy EJ, the DJ, who does uh, Power Connect, a show called Power Connect. Uh, I was we... on EJ's show back in the days. In fact, that was the first time that FMI and I ever worked together. Remember, bro? <laughs> Doing oh, radio. Back, EJ. Oh. EJ, that's right. You see how small this that's industry is? Right? Crazy. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. So that was we, the first time we ever did radio. That's a fact. That's long. Yep. So we we did um we created his show to cater to new artists because when I first started it. I, I was frustrated at what I was hearing on the radio every day. I was like, oh, man, I'm hearing the same songs. I turn from this one to that one. It's the same thing. I said, well, you know what? If I create this, when I create this playlist, I want to play stuff that you don't hear anymore. And I was doing that. And I wouldn't even play, like, I would stay five years back. So you wouldn't even hear nothing on my station that they're playing now. Then I was like, okay, well, how do I touch the new artists or, or the, the young kids? Like, they're not going to listen to all this old stuff. You know what I mean? So I'm going to have to switch it up. So I switched it up to play current music, which they can tap into. But then I also created the Power Connect show, with EJ the DJ, for new artists and new music strictly. So this way they have somewhere to go and an outlet to, you know, to showcase their music. You know, and it's funny you bring that up, too. I know the other day I seen on TikTok, there was this young girl. She's now older than like 21 or 20. And she's listening to music from like the 60s and the 50s. That's all she does. And people tune into her live just to listen to it. And they're learning the music through her. So 
There, wow. There's a platform for everyone. So, you know, when you create yeah. that that niche experience, people want to tap into it. And I feel like, you know, you, you're on to something with, the, with being five years behind. I would still want to do that because I'm like, as a DJ, I'm spending all the time. I just came from the club at five in the morning. Right now, lost my voice, so I get you. <laughs> yeah, but you know, with with, with that, I, I I got a, a DJ, um, and, and it's, it's funny you said that. I have a DJ named DJ uh, Dylan. When he came to us, he was fourteen. When when they sent me the his his mix at fourteen, I was like, this dude is not fourteen. I was like, how? No way in hell. He wasn't even. He wasn't thought of. He he wasn't. His parents probably was just just born when this stuff was coming out, but somehow they taught him how to, you know, get into all of this music. And now I think he's seventeen now. Dope, really dope, dope DJ. You know. Yeah, I, I think that even even with the the younger people, and that's why VPR has always also been so focused just on independent artists. Yep. There is so much fantastic music out there, right? And so many amazing musicians, especially in New York City. I mean, we're surrounded by talent, but what gets focused on is what's played on the radio, what's played around us, but that talent doesn't get tapped into. That's why, you know, my bro's doing these live shows. It's all these new upcoming artists, and this is before they pop. Being able to offer that sort of platform really does also build those hefty relationships, you know? So tell us what's next for for FUBU Radio, are you working in other areas? Like, are you also working in FUBU TV? Because I know that's also um, a thing, the whole FUBU streaming platform. Yeah. Um, well, really quick, I was looking at my demographic uh, yesterday, and it's from 13 to 65 plus. Like, every, from you... I couldn't even ask for a better demographic. Everybody, right? Yep. Everybody is tapping in at at a certain age. Um, well, what's next for us? We just we just uh, signed this deal with um, U forty two. Let me see which way I go. U forty two. They're a net uh, a tech company that have their own network. Uh, so we just uh, signed a deal with them late last year. So they, we're powered by them now. Um, and we have our own network. So not only do I have a radio station that I can put music on, shows on or whatever, I also have a network. Um, and, you know, it's different from Forest Bias Network. That's an actual TV, you know, station type thing where, you know, they're doing streaming stuff. But this is just for all the stuff that I do here and I create here, I can actually have an outlet somewhere to put it in other than YouTube or, you know, on social media, I have a, a whole network that I could do. So whatever can't fit on the radio station, I can put it on the, the network. So it for me, it gives me a broader, a broader base because with with radio, once I fill up those slots, I'm kind of like, those that's it. Now I have the network where I can create shows in here. I just opened my studio in um in Times Square. So now I'm just creating a bunch of content. I got Pete Rock coming down here today just to holler at me. I got my um one of my hosts, Chris Childs. We're gonna jump on in the in a few and do some things. So, you know, it's just I just have the ability now to do what I want and and just put it out there. So, you know. Technology VPR, when you use it right, it, it hits. So I'm a DJ first, my brother. And now that you have FUBU radio. Here's my question to you. We just celebrated the hip hop's 50th anniversary. How do you feel hip hop <clears throat> sounds? And what sounds are you listening to a hip hop artist? Um, I listen to everything, man. I'm like, I listen to what's out right now. You know, I'm loving that new Gunner song. <laughs> song is fire. I ain't even gonna lie. But you know, I'll listen to the new cats, the you know, the little babies and all of that. In the futures, and but I also listen to, you know, the Marvin Gaye's and the Patti LaBelle's and you know, um, the Howard Hewitt's and you know what I'm saying. Like I, I'm I'm all the way around. Like because I grew up in the era where you know I'm fifty. I'll be fifty three next month. So my mom, she was you know into music, and my father was a, like a DJ, a little side DJ. He wasn't really a DJ. He wasn't going nowhere DJ, and he just DJing in the house, but. They were into music a lot, so I I was raised on all of that stuff. 
and um and I like it all. Like, you know, even with, with hip hop, you know, they said I remember years ago they said hip hop was dead, right? I didn't I didn't necessarily agree with that, but I was like, okay, if we don't accept these younger younger artists and these up and coming artists, like, you know, the artists before some of these, you know, historic artists, you know, the artists we accepted them, then you know, we have to change that because you have these kids, right? Times are changing. You know, they're not gonna do what we do. They're gonna do what they what, what, what they see and what they know and 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 what they're living right now. So, you know, like we did, right? Yeah, the same thing. It's it's the same thing. I was saying that to myself last night when I'm sitting there watching people's managers come up to me trying to give me their music. Oh, yeah. we got twenty seven here, Juicy. I'm like, I hear you. Relax. Give me a second. Right. I mean, I'm this. I'm the best artist in the world. I'm an I I'm, I hear you, my brother. I've been doing it for years. <laughs> I've been touring. I hear you. I'm gonna give you all the respect and love. But go ahead, man. Yeah. So you know, it, it's 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 that. It's it's just it's it's us. You know, twenty years later, you know, we couldn't, we wouldn't be able to tell you what we would be doing. You know, at eighteen, you know, hey, when I'm 38, 40, this is what I. You don't know. You know. So um, I'm glad that the the pressure. You know. You, it eased up a little bit on the new artists and the younger artists because, you know, some of the old artists or older artists came out and sp speak against it. And, like, I know Buster just said something on BET, which um, was really relevant because, you know, you got to look the part to play the part, you know. And if these kids don't see you looking the part or playing the part, then they're like, why should I listen to you? Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> what have you done for me? You know? Yeah, what have you done for me? Yeah. Like, I, I probably got more money in my pocket than you do doing this. Yeah. So, yeah. Why yeah. Should I back then? Selling you know? credit cards. Right? Yeah, so, you know, everybody's, everybody's, <laughs> everybody, everybody's going to do their thing. But, you know, like I said, you know, you got to, you got to give these kids the opportunity to show, showcase the, you know, what they have. And, you know, like I said, I listen to all of it, you know, I even, some of it is is getting. I ain't gonna lie, and you know, don't let me oh just. Oh you on VPR? You right. early to lie. Some of it is just redundant. It's like, okay, yeah. I know your booty hoes brown. I know your thing. Right. 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 <laughs> like you know, and, and I kind of want them to get away from it. I know we got a, a, you know, you got some really a good artists out here like Kaya. She's from Queens. Um, Kaya so Davis. Yeah, yeah Kai baby, man. She be yes, yeah, we interviewed her. You know, yeah, spitting, she be yes, you can spit for real, for real. Yeah, yeah. I, grew up, I grew up with her moms. You know what I mean? My mom's with the same school, but she, yo, she be spitting, man. And it's like, it's refreshing to hear that. You know what I'm saying? And to see that, you know? Um, but I just don't like when, I like originality. So if an artist looks around, like, okay. If an artist looks around and says, everybody's doing this, I want to do this. You know what I'm saying? I want to go my own route. You don't see much of that. It's, it's you know, right. if, if everybody's going this way, you got 75% of the people wanting to follow. You know, even with me, it's like people say, oh, you're going to start a radio station? Oh, well, you're going to be internet radio? And I said, no, I'm going to be a radio station. Oh, you're going to do podcasts? No, I'm going to do a radio <laughs> station. And I want my set set up like a radio station, like if you guys see it in here, it looks like a radio station. You know what I'm saying? It's, yep. It doesn't look like, you know, we don't have the, the plush couches and the, you know, the mics and stands and all of that. Everything looks like a radio station where you sit down and you, you really, you know, talk about the music. So um, I wanted to be different. I didn't want to, I didn't want to go down that lane. Somebody said to me the other day, they said, why didn't you do the podcast thing? Because you know, everybody's getting paid off the podcast. And I'm like, well, when I started this, nobody was really, I think it was um, just maybe one person that, that really got a deal. Maybe that was like Nori at that time, you know, um, maybe a few other people. Um, but yeah, they were giving it to Morgan and them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my mm -hmm. thing is not, I don't want to sit down and just talk to people all day, every day, and then have these. You know, long conversation. Me, I, I have a problem with watching podcasts because they're an hour long. So it's like <laughs> sometimes I don't have an hour. You know, I don't have an hour to just sit there. And then if I do watch it, 
I'm watching it in sections. Okay, I watch 20 minutes, then I got to go do something. I come back, and then I watch the, you know, tw- so that kind of throws me off a little bit too. So I wanted to make sure that I had something that was one music you can hear 24 seven, two shows that entertain you, um, and three giving out knowledge and wisdom and 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 you know, information that you can actually use to help you further yourself in life. You know, we, we do things, we talk about grants, we talk about how to get grants, how to do marketing, how to do branding. You know, we really have these deep conversations where it's not just about, you know, just, just about the music, it's about everything, you know what I mean? So, and right. that's what I'm most proud of because I can go now, I can say to myself, you know, I'm supplying. Then I got a, a host of beautiful people that, that work with me, that really support me. Um, some of them been rocking with me since day one. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to be a, a person in their life that they can come to and help, you know, enhance their career, start their career, or even further their career, you know? So that that's that's how I get my joy out of it. Right. And it's an uphill battle, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, some people say, oh, you got FUBU, oh, it's easy because of the brand and this, that, and third. And it's like, it ain't never been easy for us. We've always had to work at each individual company that we started. Yeah, the clothing is hot, but you know, it's not gonna um it's not gonna just make everything else work. <laughs> you have to still put in the work, you know. A hundred percent. Like I you know, I've started to notice like just independent brands that have popped up. I want more persons that I see that the females are using the telefair or telfair, something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm just like you know. I see the work that they have black in. owned bland, brand as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I understand. I, I definitely understand that. And it's crazy how people go looking and be like, "Oh, Fubu!" Like you guys didn't have to go through the trenches to yeah, get that. Even with this business, man, I'm gonna tell you. You know, the first, the first two years, it was like beta, trying to figure out the playlist, trying to figure out the right, the right um, music to play, and then getting the right DJs on and then getting the right personalities. Even we weren't even thinking about personalities in the first two years. We were just thinking about DJs. Then once we became, you know, once we got the playlist together, we was like, okay, we need to add some personalities. And I've went through like three teams already. This is my third team because people want to be affiliated or they want to come here and they don't want to work. And it's like, bro, you see me, I'm the CEO. And I am busting my ass every day doing stuff and running around here like a chicken with my head chopped off. Like, I don't got nothing. Right. So what makes, it, Yo. yeah, <laughs> so what makes it feel, what makes you feel like you can come around and do minimal work right. and reap large rewards? It, it just doesn't happen like that. A sense of entitlement, right? Yeah. And that happens with years of knowing people. And, you know, it sucks. And you said three teams, VPR. Yeah. You know, for all the listeners that's, 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 that's paying attention right now, three teams, these are people that he known that he had to cut off just because of business, because they're bad for business. Mm-hmm. Right. At FMI and I have seen it. We've had people come and go like, hey, we, yeah. we'd love to intern with you. We'd love to. Where they at? Right. Mm-hmm. You know, these two, these two have never, right. Like yeah. the, we are the mainstay and like like yeah. you, CEO. Right. Like that's always going to be the study because, you know, your business, you know what you're looking to portray. And you know the level of professionalism that it takes to get us done. To, yeah. to get and, and and when I when I started this this thing, it was like, you know, I always look at it like it's gonna take three or four years to get off the ground, you know. So in that third year, coming around to that fourth year, we finally started getting advertising, and you know, business started coming in. I was like, oh man, we about to turn the corner, baby. Let's go! Boom, COVID. So we had just gotten in our new studio. Remember that, bro? <laughs> yeah. that hurt. That hurt. So I'm like, I'm like sitting there, like, how the hell can I? All right, I gotta figure this out. But being that I, at that time, I had the core of my team that I do have now was together. So my program director was like, oh, no problem, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. He said, uh, we just had people record some stuff. Everything's recorded. I said, nah, but these shows is live. He said, bro, everything is recorded. I was like, you sure? And he was like, trust me. He went and did his magic. Our numbers were like way up at that time. And we wound up getting through it. And, you know, because everybody was home. So we wound up getting through it. Right, right. Uh, you know, so 
But so even funny. even coming out of it, and then when we came out of it, it was like, okay, what do we, how we got to get back out here? We got to figure this out. We got to get people, you know, accustomed to, to working and getting back in the studio and, you know, sitting face to face with people. And then, you know, did this deal with U42 and everything worked out. So now I got, I got a studio in Atlanta. I got a studio here yeah. in Times Square. And then I got a studio in North Carolina. That's what's up. The grind, the grind never stops for real, right? You know, I'm punching. Okay. He came, he came out going wild. <laughs> yeah, so no, you got to do it. You, I want to ask you a two-part question, right? Uh -huh. In your experience so far, because your career with Fugu has been extensive. What would you say was one of the biggest obstacles for you? And then what would you say was one of your like best and favorite moments in your journey so far? I think the biggest obstacle I think what everybody faces when they build in a business is capital. Um, you know, it wasn't easy. And back then I was, I was, a uh, when we started, everybody had their own jobs. So I was a property manager. I had, I had a 200 unit, um, complex in, in, uh, in Harlem that I, I managed and I had like 11 employees. I was only 20 years old when I got the job, but I did that till I was about 26. And throughout those years, we constantly started, stopped started stop it was just because we didn't have the capital or and the knowledge that you know the expertise to really get through it without making some critical mistakes where we were blowing a lot of money because we didn't have the experience and what we were doing but we figured it out but you know i would always say capital because that's the one thing that even to this day when i talk to people they say yo you know, I want to do this. I want to do the sneaker company. I want to do girls line. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I'm like, you know, well, you got money. You got it. nah. That's what I'm asking you. For. Right. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm asking you. For. I'm like, bro, you don't go you know, somewhere. So, to hear. You know, so for us, it was the capital, and when we finally got that, um, we were off and running. But the reason we were off and running was because we put in a lot of legwork. You know, we were at those videos. We were at those black expos and all over, you know, Indianapolis and and DC and Philly and New York and wherever we can, you know, travel and make it at that time, we were there and we were selling out. So we knew we had something. We just didn't know, you know, what it was gonna be. Cause our thought process was having a store, you know, and and having our product in the store. We had no idea it was gonna take off and be what it is. Um, and then I will also say my best moment um, was meeting Nelson Mandela in South Africa. I think that was like, I, that was just mind blowing. I was, I'm a grown man and I ain't never, I've seen it. I've been around a lot of celebrities. Um, I've talked to them, I've you know had conversations with them, but I've never physically shook while I'm standing next to them because they're standing next to me. You know, it was it was never that. So that's and the, the thing was that, you know, he requested us to come. You know, so when he requested us to come, I was like, I was like, dang, who's this? How does he know about us? Like that's crazy. wow. That's huge. So when he requested us to come, we tried to get there. Um we were actually we were on our way there. Well first of all, let me go back a little bit. The conversation went, hey, I just got off the we're in the car. He said, I just got off the phone with Nelson Mandela, Dallas people, and they want you to, he wants you to come by and and, and uh, meet him tonight. So I'm in the car, you know, I'm I'm a little brown boy from Queens. So I'm like, you know, this bruh, how does Nelson Mandela know who we are? First of all. So he explained to me that um he gave him, he gives his kids, the, the grandkids and whatever, clothing and, and you know, whatever they, they give the people clothes, their people clothes over there. So I was like, really? I was like, all right, cool. Like, let's do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, no problem. So we're on our way to go see him. Phone rings back in about 15 minutes. It says, uh, oh, we're going to have to cancel. <laughs> um, he has to fly out and meet a dignitary, so he's not going to be able to make it. So when he, my guy tells me, I'm like, oh, you crazy. We were this close to meeting Nelson Mandela. But we were so, still so excited 
just the fact that he wanted us to come, we would have ran with that. If that was the only memory, we would have ran with that. Right. That's like a Grammy nomination, right? Like, you know, <laughs> it wasn't the award, but it was right, the nomination. Right. But we, went, we went to um, Sun City for, I think, like two or three. It was supposed to be there for like three days. And on the second day, he called. It was like the, the midday or something. He called and was like, hey, Nelson Mandela's back. And he wants to meet you guys if you uh, if you were still around. And I think we were leaving like two days later. So we were like, yo, let's go now. And it was like, you want to leave this place and go back? We was like, yes, <laughs> check out. Let's go. We drove back to um, Johannesburg, straight to his house. And I get out, big, huge doors. We walk in there, sit down. I'm sitting in this house. I'm like, I'm looking around like, oh, man. They're like, no pictures. Sorry. I had the, the flash off, and I was flashing pictures. And this is the thing. I don't even have the pictures. I don't know where the pictures are. You know, so that's how God works. I don't even have the pictures. Never even saw the, I saw them the time I took them, but I haven't seen it since then. And then um, after that, he came downstairs. He welcomed us. He shook our hand, talked to us for about a good two, three minutes. And then was like, oh, let's go outside and take a picture. We're going to take a picture outside. We went outside. And if you if I show you the picture, I'm like trying to put my hat on. I'm my face is I'm shaking like a leaf. But I think that to me, you know, was one of the biggest, uh, the, my best moment actually, in doing all this. You know, I can even see though all the other stuff was a lot, but yeah. you know, that that's was the best. Mental. Wow, yeah. that's, that's something else. Because you start a brand not knowing where it's going to take you, and then now. You're sitting with Nelson Mandela, you know, LL's running around with the president, you know, Barack is quoting your, 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 your bread for us, by us. It's, it's just crazy. Right. You've made history, man. You guys yeah. have made history. We've grown up with the brand and yeah. what you guys have just done for the industry, what you guys have done for hip hop, clothing, just we thank you here from VPR. Like, I appreciate that, man. Honestly, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. So we are looking forward to hearing more about FUBU Radio. Please let everybody know where they can follow you, how they can access the radio station and, you know, about your um, how they can access all of the different lineup that you have. Yeah, you can follow me on um, on Instagram or social media, Mr. Kizo, M-R-K-E-E-Y-Z-O. Um, you can follow uh, Fubu Radio at Official Fubu Radio on um, on social media, and if you want to download the app, we have a free app that you can download, um, and then take us on the go with you. You can find that either on our website, Google Play Store, Apple Play Store. So you know, and then we're also on all the other streaming networks, um, streaming services rather. Uh, iHeart, Odyssey, TuneIn. Um, you can tell Alexa to play us. You can tell Google Play to play us. I will tell Google to play us. So it's, we're, we're everywhere. So, But get the app. If you get the app, trust me, it, it helps me build this brand. So I always say get the app. Right. But get those you analytics. But if you don't got no more space on your phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like you got a lot, man. Be like, oh man, I ain't got. I'm like, bro, I mean, that's everybody's tale, <laughs> the tale of no space. Pizza, before before we get you up out of here, we do have one question from uh, one of our viewers. Okay, they said that the new brand from a small town in South Carolina. What is the best advice you can give me? Uh, and that's from well, I would I would say you know because like sometimes people start brands in, in places where they don't have a lot of uh, access to things, you know, um, go to places like New York, you know, walk the fashion district, go to places like, you know, LA and their fashion districts, move around and see what, what other, you know, what other States have that have like the fashion capitals, because a lot of times, and I've, and I've worked with so many people who, was trying to start brands in, in smaller towns and they're like, oh, I don't have that here and I don't have that there. Yeah, you can look on the internet and you can pretty much find a lot of stuff on the internet.
but sometimes you don't know what you're getting on the internet. So I would advise you to get out, go out there, be at places like the project show, you know, walk the shows, walk the trade shows, see what, what people are doing. Um, and then just, you know, do, I always tell people to do their homework and that's like all across the board. That's for if you, you're creating a brand, you're building a brand, or you're still trying to, you know, further your brand. You, you got to do your homework because it's so much to be to be um, learned from watching other people do their things or hearing other people's stories or, you know. And the only way you're gonna you're gonna be able to hear that is if you are doing your research. Um, sometimes it's hard. Like I'm 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 not that easy to get to, but I'm not that hard to get to. You know, sometimes if you catch me on the right day, I might be able to throw some jewels at you. But at the end of the day, I don't have the time or the capacity to sit there and answer all of your calls. And and sometimes I tell people, I say, listen, I'll 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 help you out, but you're gonna have to give me a couple of dollars. I ain't gonna hit you in the head because I know you're just starting, but for for my time. And for me to break some of the things that I'm doing, you're gonna have to, you know, just give me a couple of dollars and I'll, I'll, I'll guide you in the right direction. Cause I'll shoot you the first call for free. I'll give you every jewel you need to know for free. But once you start getting into it, you have, you're gonna need more answers. Okay. I, I yeah. tell people all that all the time after a few yeah. minutes on a phone conversation, I'm like, wait a minute, this is segueing into a consultation. So that's going to be a little bit separately. I, we even had a conversation. I've given you some free advice, but now we're crossing mm -hmm. over to. Yeah, because it, it, it's like that. It's like, yeah, you're going to write down everything that I say. Mm -hmm. But once you start putting that stuff into play, you're going to run into other. You're going to come back for more, right? You're going to come. You, know, you, need, you know. need more. And, 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 and further, I don't, even, I don't even charge people. Like, I be hitting them with like 500 a month. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, just give me. Give me five hundred a month. Yeah, damn fly. Sorry. Look, that's my, that's my house and came to him. <laughs> well, that's why you said that. It flew in the ocean. <laughs> so, from my screen to your screen. Um, yeah. but, but further, Shamika, I would also say, as a new entrepreneur, you know, you guys really have big, bigger opportunities in front of you because of the internet and because of technology. So I would say also to follow mentors in your community, like people that you emulate to be, brands that you emulate to be, you can follow and learn. And there's a lot that you can do on your own as you're creating a brand, like learning how to edit, right? Um, and, and shoot video and content. All of that is going to be key to helping you build your brand without having to put so much money into everyone else's hands. Um, but yeah. definitely with that focus on branding, you you got to expand outside of your outside of your little area, but that's where having social media and stuff can really, really help you. Yeah, even with me, I had a problem trying to get people to help me shoot content. You know, I was like, I got to capture this content because I'm just starting this brand. So I need this content. Like, and then I had people I know, oh, yeah, I'm going to come up when you shoot. I'm going to shoot Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. You know, those two days. <laughs> they would come once or twice, and then they wouldn't yeah. come They wouldn't come anymore. Yeah. And sometimes they would give you the excuses. And, Yo, I can't come. Sometimes they didn't even call you at all. Right. So after yeah, I yeah. missed, like, I think I missed, like, maybe, like, three or four shows. It just took about three or four shows for me to miss. And I went out. I bought me a camera some stands, some lights, and I ran everything myself. So you would see me in the studio sometimes where I'm running the cameras, the yeah, lights. Yeah, right there. Yeah, I was just like, oh. We got the same, when I told the interns and the where you at, because we needed content, he's DJing live, we're talking to each other, we needed a third party. Right. FMI, after that last no call, no show, yep. came in with the tripod, the Go, camera. I would have bought the GoPro, like, everything, and I was what? editing my show in real time. Like, he he did. Did. Let's capture these shots. I was like, this right I here. I used to be dipping around the, under the camera, so yeah. I don't you know. Yo, yo. <laughs> the little circle. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'm telling you, so, and then with me doing that, right, I got 4.1 terabytes of videos and audio. You know what I'm saying? So I got stuff and I and I have yet to put it together, but I can even save that for the documentary. Once I put out the documentary, I, I had a, a video on my, I got two videos at the top of my Instagram page. It shows you how I started 
the board I had was smaller than a laptop. And I, I didn't even know anything about audio. I just went out. My man was like, oh, all you need is this board. I went out and bought the board. Then two people came to sit down with me. And I called them. I said, yo, there's only two things right here. He was like, yeah, you're going to record two people. I said, so how, how am I going to be caught? You got to be caught one person at a time. I said, man, oh come on, bro. Like, so, you know, it was a little board, then it was a bigger board, then it was the biggest board. So, you know, but you, you got to invest in yourself, man. And, and I think a lot of times people get caught up in the, you know, let me create something in my mind and then I'm going to go to this person and that person because they have money and they're going to see they're going to do it for me. And it's not like that anymore. That's like the 90s mentality. With with social media and everything they got going on now, when you sit down, even if you watch Shark Tank and things like that, they'll tell you how many sales you got. They want to know what you That's did, awesome. how you how you invested in your company before you go to somebody else and ask them to invest in your company. We're in the time of creating your own worth. If you feel yeah. like you have to go to somebody to get and they're gonna give you anything, what are you what are you talking about? We're in 2023. Yeah, connect so the music, connect the jobs, everything else. Create your yeah, work. so you gotta you gotta invest in yourself and 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 you know show somebody that hey, I'm doing this on my own. This is how far I've gotten. Now, if you can add to it, fine. You know, if you can't, fine. I'm gonna keep going. You know, because this thing, you know, I remember people tell me, oh man, you should quit. You know, it's not gonna work out. You know, you got too many people and this and that. Yeah, and, that yeah. and it was like, how do I quit on my team when my team didn't quit on me? You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that's, that's to me, I was just like, nah, they believe in me because they're still around and they're, they're working. You know, I used to have one of my hosts used to fly from state to state every time she had to record. And I was like, nah, this dedication is serious, you know? That's loyalty. So, yeah, you know, so you can't you can't quit on people like that, you know. Guys, I appreciate you guys for tuning into the one and only VPR Radio, Kizo. Yo, you was dropping gems, uh, Shemeka. Okay. Thank you for the amazing question, Kiana the Goddess. I'm gonna let you close the show. Yeah, you already know we appreciate you. I mean, Fubu is a brand that I wore, I watched, and watched you grow. So to have you guys here for me is already just like. You know, VPR, we keep growing. We love watching the people around us keep growing. And we love having brands like yourself that really started with the passion, started for the people. Your brand name says it all, right? For us, by us. So for those that didn't know about FUBU, you know now. Make sure you go and follow. Do your history. You guys were even featured in the Ralph McDaniels Video Music Box documentary, which we were there for. So you guys have been instrumental to hip hop, to music, and to fashion. We appreciate you all. And... Make sure you guys download that app. We'll speak to you soon, Keith. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, y'all. Peace. Pleasure. Ciao. All right. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, um, God. <laughs> It's another it's another amazing Thursday. Thank you to all the viewers, everyone that likes, share, and subscribe to our videos. I appreciate it. Continue running up to Spotify. And... Uh, We'll see. Yeah, and get, and get us your music. If you're looking to get on that Spotify playlist, those numbers are growing and growing and growing. So independent artists, you can either Dropbox it directly to us at vpr.radio at gmail.com, or you can send it to us. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll see if it can go on the playlist. Shamika, definitely follow us. We'll speak to you more behind the yeah. scenes on helping you with your branding. Um, and we'll see you here next Thursday. You know, we love being here. We hope that the energy that we're putting out, the knowledge that we're able to help um, put on the table for you guys is something that you can receive with the same love and genuine energy that we are giving. And we hope to see you here next Thursday. And as always, thank you for watching. Thank you, partner. I couldn't do any of this without you. You're the best. Uh, Bye, guys. You. Later, guys. Thank you, JD. I didn't even see you there creeping in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> We love you, JD. We'll see you soon. Later, Shemeka. <laughs>